Alan is joining me today to show us how to construct some cull frames to get a little bit of an extension on our growing season. Now, Alan, this is one we put together last year. Remind us how we constructed it. Well, we used scrap uh, irrigation tubing that we use around the garden all the time, and we just cut the lengths that we needed. Uh, it's made with some standard PVC fittings that you can find at your local hardware store. And then you put a wood uh, frame on the bottom here mm -hmm. so we could just what? Staple the plastic to it. That way we know that the wind in, in Oklahoma will batter the plastic real well and we'll just replace it at the end of the season. And we're getting ready to use this for extending our, our growing season. Now one thing that we did have a problem with on this one, when we set it on the raised bed, the wind not only uh, battered the plastic, but it blew the frame right off several times. Yeah, this thing is, is awful light. And one of the things I suggest is either use a rebar pin and wrap bell wire around it, like what we did last year, or use a tent stake. Okay. And we have some tent stakes over there. Right, now over here is one that we've put together that's new this year, Alan. And uh, these are the tent stakes that you're talking about that we could attach to maybe hold them a little bit more. Uh -huh. Come up here and talk about what you did on the end here. Well, again, um, we had, had found these clips, and we mentioned to you last year about these clips to hold this plastic on. It goes over a half inch PVC or uh, black polyethylene pipe. And we special ordered those from a greenhouse company when right. we found them, right? It was a hobby greenhouse company, yeah. And then what I did is, is we've taken a, a cattle panel, and a, we have one behind us, and it's 54 inches tall. We just bent it in a semicircle to fit our, our three foot wide uh, raised beds. To protect the plastic on the edges and on the bottoms is we took our old irrigation pipe and just split it, where we could just wrap it right around our, our tubing, bring our plastic right over it, and then just just clip Snap it right it onto right it. On. Now, Alan, we got this idea from a viewer who was telling us he had done that, but he would also use a glue gun to kind of attach the plastic for a little bit more security, which we haven't done, but that could easily... Oh, very easily be, be done. And just, just he just welded it what, right over the corners. All right. Now, there's an art to bending the cattle panel. Why don't you kind of show us what you've done there? Well, the, the thing that I looked at is, is what's the best way. I figure the the long runs ought to be on the top. So I'd set the cattle panel, I'd find the center, I'd start at the bottom and I'd just work from the center out and just push on the, the, the crosses or the unions and just slowly work out. And then I'd flip it over and do the other side. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour to bend that eight foot long cattle panel. Uh, the direction I needed it. Now, an eight foot would probably be easier than the 16 foot, wouldn't it, just because it's easier to work with? Yeah, I'd take two people with the 16 foot. Okay, so you got your arch and we've set it on here and covered it with plastic. I think that one's going to be a little bit heavier for us and not blow. And then when it gets hot, we'll just open up the ends here to release some of the heat. Yeah, you can it. just open it up and, and clip it back and release the heat. Or even as heavy as it is, I, I think that you might be able to set a brick underneath the side to release some of the heat and okay. add fresh air to it. And just raise up one end. Mm -hmm. Now, Alan, why don't you come over here on this side and, and we'll talk about this one. This is another one. It's not really as uh, insulated, I don't think. But let's just pull these uh, clothespins off and we can show them what we're doing here. This one, to release the heat, you can just roll up one end. And we have strings in that you can attach the clothespins to and release the heat a little bit more. And how we've constructed this one, we have the rebar stuck down in the side here. And then again with our extra pipe, we've just slipped it over the rebar. And then we've taken some string and tied it as tight as we can on the side here, also on the other side. And then we have one here on the top. And that way we can just use clothespins to stick along here as, as we need to. And again, this is not going to be that airtight, but it will release the heat a lot better, which is a problem. So like for today, we got down into the upper 30s last night. Mm -hmm. Today it's going to get in the 50s, and it would really cook some vegetables so we could uh, release the heat a lot more. Now, Alan, one thing that is a concern, sometimes the temperature is going to drop too much and it may get too cold. Yeah. What, what could we do here maybe to trap some more heat in? Well, the heating cable is always a good idea. Um, I think that's probably going to be about, about the easiest way to do it. They come in all different lengths, and uh, I think this one's like 17 feet. We can run 
one side down one row and, and come back and have two different rows of, of stuff planted. In here. And so that way we can uh, get the soil to heat up and it also will cause some humidity and heat up the inside. Now, of course, you could also run an extension cord out and put a light bulb or something under here just to keep it away from the plastic so it doesn't melt. But if you needed to, there's several options to get it a lot heater. Now another, a lot hotter. Now a lot of things too, Alan, that, that comes to mind is the uh, water and irrigation. What do we need to do to keep it from freezing on us? Well, if you're using some type of drip system, we recommend that you disconnect it from uh, like your phosphory hydrants or whatever because the water that's trapped up in that head by leaving it connected could cause your phosphory hydrant to go ahead and break up there, your, your head of your hydrant. Here we have our, our system in our ground, and we have a little bit of exposed pipe. Uh, the exposed pipe, if there's water left in here, will freeze. We do have a, a valve down in here, but it's not drainable. Uh, at our valve box, at, at uh, the other end of our raised beds, uh, it has a Y strainer in there. We'll make sure that the electric, electronic valve is closed, and then we'll open and drain from the uh, the Y strainer all the water that's in these lines. We'll open all these valves, and it'll drain all the water out. We won't have to worry about freezing. But we could still put our drip irrigation system in here and use it, especially uh -huh. with the protection from the plastic. That would keep it warm, but after each use, we'd always want to drain it out so it wouldn't freeze. Well, um, as long as it's protected in here, I don't think that, that we'll really have to worry about it. But as, if it really gets down into the teens and, and the single digits, I, I think we'd have to really worry about it. And, and drain it. Now, of course, as small an area as this is, we could just hand water it with a watering wand, too. But this is a perfect way to extend the season. Now, we're going to be planting some carrots, spinach, and lettuce under these cold frames. And really, without much attention at all, we can get production throughout the entire winter. We just have to watch those coldest nights, not only with the water, but make sure we get hot enough. We won't be watering them as much or fertilizing them as much, but it's still a nice way. And last year we had some production in carrots. Had a lot of fun with it too. Oh, so. a lot of fun. Alan, we appreciate you joining us. And again, maybe this is something you'd like to try to extend your season at home.